FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Every now and then you see that fighting spirit, be it in Washington, D.C., or in the Missouri State Legislature. We've had a number of Democrat lawmakers here in this great state, the state I live in, I know Indiana, you're a great state too. We've had a number of lawmakers who have uh, discussed the Second Amendment and acted as though somehow law-abiding Americans should be punished for things that crazy people do uh, and the illegal ways that they use firearms. We've had uh, several lawmakers here in Missouri propose legislation. One of them, uh, Maria Nadal, uh, uh, Maria Nadal, Chappelle Nadal, had uh, come up with legislation saying that, well, you know, parents, you need to let schools and the state government essentially know if you have a firearm uh, because that's Act, like that's going to do something. Why not let the schools know if if daddy has a drinking problem or if mummy has a drug habit or if you have a pool because more children drown in pools or a space heater because more pe- more children are killed by space heaters than firearms. Uh, it, it, it's so many insipid pieces of legislation. So we had Missouri State Representative Mike Lira introduce a bill which would criminalize any legislation that seeks to disenfranchise you of your Second Amendment right. And he's taking some heat over it, but he joins me right now on the phone. Representative Lira, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Dana. So your thought process behind this legislation, because you know I agree with you. I don't look at it, and I know a lot of uh, folks on the left are criticizing you for it, and we're going to talk about that in a, minute, uh, in a minute. But this, you had said earlier that you, you have no illusions about where this legislation would go, but that it's really, uh, this is a good way to kind of stoke the discussion about the Second Amendment in Missouri. What was your thought process behind this legislation? Well, first of all, filing this bill did exactly what I wanted. Representative Rory Ellinger files House Bill 545, liberal Democrat from University City. Mm-hmm. And after about 100 angry emails from constituents, I just finally had enough. And I, I decided it was time to send a message to stop this nonsense. Yes. So I file House Bill 633 and di- with a solid punch in the nose. And the effect of it was, uh, finally, senior... Democratic uh, member of the Judiciary Committee, who I sit next to in that committee, finally said to me yesterday, hey, let's take a step back, you know, let's, let, let, let's not continue this and fuel the fire. So uh, apparently the message got to the Democratic caucus. Right. And and this uh, legislation, we we discussed this for several days. Rory Ellinger, Jill Shupp and others introduced, uh, for those who may not know, a legislation in Missouri that would uh, really w- would confiscate uh, semi-automatic firearms. They were so open and broad with their poorly written language uh, that it would really subject basically every gun owner in the state of Missouri uh, to uh, inspection and confiscation of their firearms or they would be charged with a Class C felony. It was one of the most egregious violations of the Second Amendment, even even more, Representative Leary, even more strict than uh, stricter than what we've seen proposed in California. House Bill 545 of Ellinger Shoot Bill, Section 4, Subsection 3 says, surrender the assault weapon or the large capacity magazine. Surrender. Yeah, exactly. No compensation. We're coming to get them. Yeah. Outrageous. It, very much so. And folks across the state, uh, uh, well, I, I, I look at it like this. Uh, this this just shows that Rory Ellinger and Jill Shupp and these other two lawmakers that uh, co-sponsored this, they have no interest in statewide office ever. Uh, but you heard, you've heard you heard from a lot of Missourians, a lot of constituents about this. And so you pushed forward, you introduced this legislation, and the reaction was interesting because those on the left, and I was reading some of what I know Rachel Maddow has gone after you, Talking Points Memo. And it's it fascinates me because they've decided to go after you over free speech. They're trying to say that your legislation is somehow a violation of the First Amendment. What is your response when you hear them come at you with such an argument? I pay no attention to ridiculous comments like that. There, are, I look at it as like this. There are consequences if I violate someone's civil rights. I'm tired of my Second Amendment rights under the Constitution being violated. And it's time to send a message. The people have had enough, 
and I'm in a position to file legislation and do something about this, and that's exactly what I did. And did you find it a little ironic, too, that these individuals, these Democrats in the state of Missouri who are trying to say that somehow uh, that this is a violation of free speech, they didn't seem to care so much about free speech back in April of 2009 when they stood by and enabled, and in some cases, Democrats who actually put uh, citizens on that MIAC report that Missouri Highway Patrol, Jay Nixon's name was on it, 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 just because they dissented with the administration or carried a Gadsden flag. Now, these same individuals somehow have a problem uh, with that they, they're screaming free speech when they sought to criminalize uh, a huge majority of the Missouri constituency because of their political beliefs. Well, the hypocrisy on the left is just incredible. It's just unbelievable. And, uh, you know, in the response from this has been incredible, about 500 emails from all over the country, and so many of them were women. I was that was the big surprise to me, and, oh, yeah. and the responses have been has been about twelve to one. So happy that finally somebody stood up against the left wing bullying. Absolutely, and the reasoning that they use against uh, again with that First Amendment. What I find, uh, Representative Lear, this is how I look at it. I don't, I don't look at at legislation that seeks to criminalize uh, pushing of uh, any 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 sort of legislation that would strip us of our Second Amendment rights. They're proposing that their their uh, desire to disenfranchise us, uh, us of a right. That's not free speech. That's tyranny. And it doesn't seem that they quite understand the difference between legislation and speech. Not at all. Not at all. You know, as I said, I view. I view the filing of legislation to take away our rights mm-hmm. explicitly written in the in the Constitution is a violation similar to a civil, civil rights violation. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And you mentioned that a lot of women had actually contacted you. Many women. I was really surprised by the, the response from the women all over the country. And, and well, and this this has all happened at the same time. I'm sure you're familiar with the story of uh, Democrat state lawmakers out in Colorado, Joe Salazar, yes. uh, and, and their remarks um, seeking to you know women. I don't like to play you know the sexual identity card, but women more often than not are greater statistics at being victims of violence uh, and and sexual abuse than men because you know as strong as a woman wants to be, she's never going to be able to fight off a man. And those are the women who are always the women, when you talk about disenfranchising law-abiding Americans of their Second Amendment rights, it's women who end up being most adversely affected. And maybe perhaps that's why you you heard for so, from so many of them, especially after what Salazar and those other Colorado Democrats have said. Right. A firearm levels the playing field. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are your plans? Uh, what you, you, do you expect this legislation to pass? How far do you expect it to go? Well, I don't know. I have not spoken to the Speaker's office yet who assigns the bills to committee. We'll see if that happens. Uh, yesterday, everybody kind of wound down early to get out of Jeff City before the snow. So uh, the bill was filed, and all I did was field calls from Pierce Morgan, Fox News, Alan Combs, and the whole day. I responded to every email, email that uh, came in front of me, by the way. So uh, we had a good time with that, and uh, we'll have to see next week when we go back to the Capitol where it goes and what the Speaker's wishes are. Well, as as a female gun owner and as a, a Missouri resident, lifelong born and raised, I want to thank you so much for for putting for standing up to these individuals who I think this is the real war on women. I think it's a real war on men and women. They're seeking to disenfranchise us of a civil right. And I want to thank you for standing up to them. You're, you are welcome. It's my job to go up there and represent my district. And my district asked for something to finally be done, and it was. Absolutely. Representative Mike Lira. And please get on Twitter. You have a Twitter account, I see. <laughs> I do. We're going to start using it. I have an intern this year. I'm not, I'm not a real Facebook, Twitter kind of person. We have those accounts, but we have a, a college intern, and he's going to start uh, posting on there for us. Excellent, excellent. Well, we look forward to it. Representative Mike Lira, thank you very much, sir. Thanks for having right. me. Of course.